In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the brand new navigation paradigms introduced with SwiftUI 4 from DubDub 2022. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here. Let's open up Xcode 14 beta 1 and let's talk about some navigation. So I'm going to stick with the iOS tab up here, the app template, and I'll creatively call this a uh, nav demo and I'll toss it onto my desktop. Now, of course, we should be sticking with a uh, SwiftUI project here since all of these are related to SwiftUI indeed. And we're gonna be covering three things today that are extremely, extremely powerful in terms of programmatic navigation, as well as opening up a whole host of new navigation paradigms in your SwiftUI project. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create two model types up here, and we're gonna be using these to illustrate what is available. So. I will create a model for a company, and we want all of our models here to both be identifiable as well as hashable, and we will discuss why momentarily. We'll want a ID in here, which is our UUID, and then we'll want a name here, which will be a string. Let's just copy and paste this into another one here, and maybe here I'll call this uh, stock. Um, and once again, we'll just keep the same ID and maybe I'll call this ticker symbol. So it's a little different. And let's actually create now a stuff in our view. Now that we've got our two models defined up here, we are going to first start by talking about navigation stacks. Now, prior to this latest introduction, we used to use a navigation view with destinations and that whole paradigm is changing uh, quite a bit actually. So to create a navigation stack, we can simply create it like that. So there is a path argument that we'll look at in a second, but let's start with the basics. Now in our navigation stack, let's say we first want a list of our companies and we essentially want a company in and we're gonna show a text element of our company.name. And let me create companies up here, which will be our, we can just create it as a, uh, we can create it as a array up here. So I'll say companies is going to be a array of company types. And let me just line break this to make it a little cleaner to read. And inside of here, we'll just create a couple companies. So of course, we'll start with Apple here. And let me just copy and paste this a few times and just change these up. So we got a couple in here to deal with. It should be good to go. All right, so now on the right hand side, of course, we see a pretty basic list of uh, these uh, companies. Now, historically, what we would do is whenever we tapped on one of these uh, elements, we would want that element to be a navigation link. Now that actually has not changed, but what has changed about a navigation link is instead of specifying the destination in this constructor here, we're gonna specify a value. And that value is the thing that we want to be hashable, which is why we made our models hashable up here. And we'll figure out why in a second. So our navigation link, the first thing here is essentially just going to be our uh, element. So we will say here company dot name. And what is our value going to be? Well, it's just going to be the company. So the instance of the company that is associated with this navigation link. So on the right hand side, nothing really looks different. But the beauty of this is, well, now when we want to tap on one of these links, we need to specify the destination and we can do so in a more intricate way. And the way we can do that is by leveraging the navigation destination modifier. And you'll see in the type here is that we need to specify the meta type of the element that we expect to get, and then we have a destination closure. So we're gonna say here that we expect to get a company.self, and this block is going to give us the instance of the company that we tapped on. So here we'll get company in. Now we can specify that the destination in our case will be nothing more than company.name, just a text label. And now what you'll see is on the right hand side when I tap on one of these, boom, it'll push on a view onto our navigation stack, which has the name of that company. So we've got Apple, we've got Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Now the first natural question is, well, what the heck is the benefit of this? The benefit of this is now you can have some flexibility of your destination and you don't need to be verbose and specify it per navigation link. Now, what do I mean by flexibility? In this case, we have a modifier saying we expect company.self. Now we can very easily add another modifier and here we're gonna use stock.self, which is why we added two um, models up above. 
Now, we don't have any elements in here which actually showcase the fact that we are iterating over uh, you know, stocks. So what we will do here is we are going to create a list. I'll take this stuff here and I'll create a section here of perhaps uh, called section A. And inside of this, we will have a for each and inside of the for each, we're gonna go over the companies and we're gonna have the same navigation link. And don't forget to do company in and I'll copy this whole shebang and we'll do it one more time for another section right below it. So I'll call this section B. I'll call this stocks and here we'll do stock in and this will be stock dot ticker. I realize I haven't created stocks up above yet. So let me do that real quick. So here we will create a couple stocks, which will be a collection of stock and we'll want to just recreate these. I'll just type them out again since it'll be quicker. So we'll have some uh, tickers here and we will have, let's see, Apple. Let's see how many I can do at the top of my head. Facebook, Google, and Microsoft. And respectively, on the right-hand side, we should see a updated list. Let me just refresh this over here. Let's see if we have any issues. Here, we need to change this since it's stock in. This should be stock dot ticker and I'll just make it a headline font just so we have some variety here now on the right hand side we should see our preview update again this is the beta so things are a little brittle but bear with me all right we see our updated uh, list on the right with two sections now again the thing to call out here is the fact that we're leveraging two different instances of this navigation destination modifier and we are handling two types one being company, one being stock. So if I hit company, we get you know the company text that we expect to see. But if I hit a stock, we'll see the related, uh, we'll see the related company here. Now let's see what's going on. Let me just hit uh, one of these up here. So let's actually click on FB, and we expect to see that related element. Let's see what's going on. Looks like we've got something being a little wonky here. So. Looks like we've got multiple sections showing up and that is not what we want. So let's figure out, ah, it's because we have a list up here over companies and that's not what we wanna do. We just wanna have a list with our two sections in it and those sections will be, you know, have their own respective for each uh, loops in them. So we should only see two sections on the right hand side over here. And if you don't see it, just bear with uh, your preview let me just give this an update. This over here should be stock. Just make sure you match up your types and don't make a silly mistake like I just did. But now we'll click on, let's see this ticker and we see this ticker. And the thing to call out here is the fact that we have two different navigation destinations. Let's talk about one more powerful thing. And this is where things get, in my opinion, really interesting and very flexible. Now navigation programmatically in SwiftUI has been something that a lot of people have been you know, asking for for quite a while. And with this change, we now get this. And let's talk about how on earth that actually applies and manifests you know, in our code. So let's take our uh, for each, let's get rid of these sections here. And I'm gonna convert this back to what we started with. So here we will say our list will go over companies and this is going to be company in. And we now have what we started with, more or less. And on the right-hand side over here, we expect this to hopefully update and not crash our preview. Let's give it a refresh. Now, how do we actually get a instance of what our navigation picture looks like? Well, we're gonna introduce a state property up here. And this state property is going to be what I'll call a stack. And it's going to be our uh, company model uh, in an array. And it's gonna start off as empty. So for those of you who are coming from UI kits, or if you're not even coming from UI kit, you can imagine every time we tap on one of these, what we are doing is we have a data binding to the stack that is visualized. In other words, if I tap on Apple, a screen or a view will be pushed on top where the model that we have more or less selected is Apple. So the concept here is that Apple has said, well, we can pass this stack in, they actually call it a path, and this will mirror essentially the view hierarchy on the right. And as we manipulate this data, we'll also manipulate our stack. Now, how do we pass this in? We can use the path argument here and simply pass in path like so. So the beauty of this is once we tap on something, that path 
uh, collection up here will begin to be populated. So if I tap on Apple, you'll see up here that we now have Apple here, looks the same, but this has actually been uh, inserted into. And the way that we can see this in action is if I come here and change this destination to let's say a text, and here we'll have a button and we'll have the text be perhaps go back. What we can do is we can modify that path and say, hey, go ahead and empty it out. And this is equivalent to pop to root view controller from those, uh, those of you coming from UI kits, essentially pop to the root view in our stack. So let's see this in action. So I'm gonna tap on Facebook here. We get this V stack, we have our text and our button. I'll hit this button and boom, we are back to our root. Now let me also add a little bit of padding around this guy because it's bothering me. Now this gets even more interesting if you think about the fact that you can populate this path with whatever you want. So let's say we want to have a stack with Facebook, Apple, Google in that order. What we essentially want to do is say this will be companies and we are going to say it'll be one, zero, and two. And as we populate this path collection, the mirrored views will be updated in our UI. Now let's actually see that in action. So I'm actually going to grab this button and instead of tossing it in this V stack, what I'll do is I will toss it below this list. So let me actually toss this whole thing in a V stack like so. And let's make sure my indentations are correct. Now on the right hand side, we expect to see a button, which we do at the bottom. And when I tap it, you'll see that a screen, a view is pushed on and we now have Google at the top. When I press back, we'll get the previous thing, which is Apple. When I press back once more, we'll get the previous thing, which is Facebook. And that's the one we started with at index one, which matches index one here. And finally, if I hit the back button again, we get back to the root. So that is a brief overview of navigation stack. The fact that you can use the path binding here to get a data representation of where you are in your view hierarchy. You can leverage this for a whole lot of interactions like deep linking, you know, forcing the user to jump to another view without having to pass around a bunch of janky bindings down a bunch of views and environment variables and, you know, doing a lot of hacky closure based uh, interactions. It's definitely a welcome change. It's a little uh, interesting that they've decided to deprecate navigation view, although it does make sense. Stay tuned for upcoming videos on the navigation split view, other navigation changes in SwiftUI 4, and a whole lot of more coverage from WWDC 2022. Before clicking away, make sure you drop a like down below. Hit subscribe if you're new here into iOS and Swift. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.